So this is for sale. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything, everything is for sale. At, a, at the right price. <laughs> at yes. the right price. <laughs> yes. was the chorale prelude on Now Thank We All Our God by Paul Manns. And yes, this organ has a wonderful tuba on the uh, solo division. Well, I'm very happy, uh, very privileged actually, and honored to be uh, joined on the bench today by uh, David Mason, um, who actually is responsible for this console, which we're going to talk about today. David, hello, thank you for for joining me on your bench. My bench. <laughs> uh, and thank you for the invitation to, uh, to play this wonderful instrument. Well, I'm David Mason, the owner and managing director of Viscount Classical Organs. We are the main importer for instruments made by Viscount in Italy. And we distribute those to retailers across the UK and Ireland and other parts of the world. I've played church organ since I was about six years old and it's been delightful to get involved in a business that allows me to combine my very passionate hobby uh, with the wonderful world of church music and musicians. I think it's important at this point for me to chip in and say that David Mason is a huge fan of pipe organs <laughs> <laughs> and he did uh, learn on pipe organs and that's I think that's his main passion. So let's just have a look <clears throat> at this fantastic instrument that is sitting behind us. What is it and how has it come to be? What's your vision for this instrument? Well, I'm sure many people watching will be well aware that there are some giants within the organ world in the UK. Henry Willis and William Hill are notable builders and their instruments are cherished. In America, uh, an equivalent personality was a gentleman called Ernest Skinner. 
and he was renowned to have built some of the finest instruments sitting in America and created many of the standards which eventually the industry adopted to build the console. A thing that I had to do was go and listen to some Skinner instruments in the flesh and then a project that I took on board was to build a console in the style of Skinner. And you'll see behind us an instrument that in terms of its architecture is so terribly different from the consoles that we see regularly in play in Britain. So if you were to go to St. Peter's Morristown, the only difference between the console there and this one is that that one has four manuals. I have just built this with three. We, the solo is still there, but it floats. I think that if um, the Beauty and Sound organ had um, been delivered with three manuals, I think they'd be a little bit furious. I I'm, I'm sure it's four manuals or, or, <laughs> or, or nothing at all. I should say actually that this, this organ has been built by the same people who made the Beauty and Sound organ, which is one of the reasons why I was so interested to uh, come and play this, to feel the uh, similarities and similar, or the, uh, similar keyboards yeah. and the same swell pedals. Very highly skilled um, joiners, carpenters and technicians. The fonts on the uh, stop heads were exact copies of the fonts in Morristown. The size of the pistons, even the felt. Skinner on his instrument has used brown felt. Why are we going into this um, level of detail? What, what is the purpose <coughs> of this instrument? Eventually, it's a, uh, an objective to find a good, worthy church home for this instrument or a, a reasonably uh, large household Musician so, might. So this is for sale. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything, everything is for sale at, a, at the right price. <laughs> at yes. the right price. Yes. <laughs> so, so um, is it possible then for if you sold this, mm. um, could somebody else then ask you to build them a, another replica yeah. like this? The moment that this is sold, I will undoubtedly shed a tear because it's become a personal friend. <laughs> uh, but the, I will then immediately commission another. In console of this quality and scale from Renatus. So sitting at this console um, actually feels very um, familiar in the sense that these rocker tabs up here, these couplers, these octaves and all sorts of things um, are very similar to uh, the old Henry Willis consoles. So David and Renatus have actually gone to the, to the extent of replicating all of these rocker tabs Oh, they, they are quite authentic, aren't they? They are quite Skinner authentic. And... I'm not entirely sure at what point Skinner introduced that type of control system. And it probably relates, indeed, stealing the idea from Willis. Uh, and many people will know that a gentleman called G. Donald Harrison, nothing to do with the Harrison and oh, Harrison, Harrison. Yes. organ builders, <laughs> just to add to the confusion. Um, eventually left the UK and went to work for Skinner as the voicer. And that created a sort of transition of tonal style in what Skinner was doing. But you know, this instrument has got some stops that Skinner almost in, is credited with inventing. The French horn, the Etz Haler. Flute Celeste. It, 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 is it, and Flute Celeste, yeah. yes. And the sound that we're hearing today is not totally authentic Skinner. This instrument has been used on a number of occasions now in different settings where the voicing requirements have, have needed to be changed. Okay, so actually what we're hearing today is not the Skinner the, 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 uh, sound. The, 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 the strings mm. are very much Skinner style. Right. Flute Celeste for sure. For the work that we've been doing today, uh, we have changed the mixture architecture from the harmonic that um, the stop head is suggesting is there. Hmm. Um, but it's very much largely um, Skinner in the periphery with some of the core moved to be a bit more English I think one style. of the wonderful things about um, <coughs> Viscount organs is that the, the tone and the sound is, is completely adjustable. You can change the instrument totally. Yeah. Every stop has a library of voices and in this technology, they're not sampled. Mm. They are actually a physically modeled, 
computer software generated voice. And that allows the instrument to be very flexible in its, in its final tonal scheme. So presumably, as this is modeled on um, a 1920s Skinner instrument, mm -hmm. this is following more or less the AGO regulations as opposed to the, the UK <coughs> RCO. Indeed, indeed. You know, and Skinner is credited mm. for creating the standards by which instruments were built. If you think oh, about, I, I mean, yeah, you must have wandered around many, many churches and noticed, particularly outside of the cathedral world, mm. that there is almost no standard of pedal board architecture. All sorts of architectures were employed in Victorian times. Mm. And Skinner is absolutely credited with being the man that started to set dimensions of pedal board to keyboard and position of pedal board relative to the lateral position of the keyboards. Right. So he's very much, um, I'm sure, the roots of AGO dimensions will find their way straight back to Skinner. I find it really interesting, actually, the level of succession between organ builders uh, across continents. Ernest Skinner was, a, uh, was massively influenced by Father Willis. Uh, but take a step back from that, um, Henry Willis was hugely inspired by Cavaille Carl oh. in France. <clears throat> yeah. so it's almost like a long line of organ building between these great, so the greatest yeah. organ <clears throat> builders in the world. If I wanted to have this console next to my organ at home, if Caroline would let me, <laughs> um, to what extent um, could I customize this console? There is virtually no limit to where you could take it. One of the things that I get great pleasure out of yeah. is sitting down with a customer and starting with a totally blank piece of paper. I have yet to meet an organist that will go to an instrument and say, that has everything I could ever have hoped for. I wish it had, or couldn't it have this extra piston, or couldn't it have? He obviously hasn't been to Beauty and Sound yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that is enchantingly pleasant is to sit down with a blank piece of paper and say, what do you want? Yeah. Who's, who, have you ever met an organist that doesn't want something extra? No, I mean, I mean you never will, will you? Because um, it, everyone has their own tastes yes. and um, idea of what a perfect organ might be. Yeah. What differences do you think are there between what you're doing with your Viscount uh, sounds and the sounds that are produced through Hauptwerk. And do you have a view on which one might be better in a church <coughs> and acoustic like this? No, I, let me perhaps begin by saying I see Hauptwerk and ourselves as somewhat different products. Oh. Mm. Um, not that I have played that many Hauptwerk instruments, but Hauptwerk is to the most part recording an instrument in its acoustic and allowing the musician to enjoy the instrument in the setting of the building. And you are buying very much the experience mm. of being at that console. And there is a certain disconnect, isn't there, that when you hear an instrument in a church that is a digital instrument and it's got 32 foots coming in all directions and it might have on chamades and you're looking around the building and saying well it just wouldn't fit in here I think to experienced musicians it creates a slightly uncomfortable feeling about the instrument. I uh, <coughs> concur with what you're saying actually um, how about, um instruments organs like Salisbury the organ of Salisbury is voiced for Salisbury the Cathedral. Cathedral. Precisely. Um, so Henry Willis voiced all of those pipes of Salisbury in mind. If you, um, even if you bring uh, a, a Salisbury Cathedral sample set in here and take away all of the Salisbury Cathedral acoustic mm. and rely on this acoustic in here, you're still hearing an organ that was voiced for another cathedral, a much, much mm. bigger cathedral. But I think, and I know that you do this from uh, working with you in the past, that you're, all of your instruments are the meticulously uh, voiced for an acoustic like we are in today.
such a sublime piece there by Frank Bridge, uh, starting on the beautiful uh, swell strings, crescendoing up to full organ before dying down again on those gorgeous strings. Time now for some quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. Quick fire question number one. What is your favorite organ? In the world? In the world. In the world. Uh, gotta go for saint -Duan. It's a good choice. You can't split the instrument from the building. Presumably you've heard it in real life. And I've been there, it. yeah, I've yeah. turned pages there. I, I have had five minutes at the keyboards. <laughs> Lucky you, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> okay. Quick fire question number two. Which one organ console would you most like to replicate on, a, on this? Oh my goodness. I suppose if one goes for style, maybe the, the Willis at Liverpool Anglican would be <laughs> quite a challenge. I think that might make even your console look a little <laughs> undersized, Richard. Oh, that sounds like fighting at all. <laughs> um, which one piece of organ music do you take to your desert island? Oh, easy. Prelude and Fugue on the name of Amar. To flay. Yeah. That is a stunningly moving piece of music. I completely agree. And you know yeah. what? One of my challenges this year is to learn that very piece. Yeah. I don't play it yet. It's, I wish it, I could play it's it. just, it's so emotionally. Well, you'll have to keep an eye out for my performance okay. online. Okay, right -o. Well, there you go. You've got to get that nailed before the end of the year. <laughs> Making no promises there, David. Right. <laughs> um, which historical organist would you like to meet mm. and what would you ask them? Oh, goodness. If, uh, you, everybody's going to say this, isn't it? It has to be Bach. Uh, I am just in awe of that man's ability to weave, I mean, his trio sonatas, just three notes at any one point in time, I'm pretty sure. And what magical combination he can achieve from such simplicity. Uh, it's I, almost like he knew what he was doing. Yeah, it almost, I, I, I would never run out of questions to put to that guy. Mm. I mean, he must have been a mathematician. You know, I, I'm, I'm an accountant and there is almost, you can sort of sense the geometry that he is working to, but he, he works it exquisitely. If he'd been a mathematician, he'd probably have made Einstein and, and, <laughs> and Newton look a little inadequate. You know, um, he was um, quite a renowned organ advisor. Um, really? In his day, yes. Yeah. And, one of his techniques of testing the, um, the, the air, the bellows on the organ, was to pull out all the, the stops, stops and yes. do that yeah. on, on the keys. I can just yeah. imagine um, him doing that. Well, that was rather dependent on how many people he had pumping <laughs> in the background. You know, if they'd yeah. all been to the pub, they'd say there was less air yes. than, than if they'd just come fresh to the job. Fall asleep on the lever. Yes. <laughs> Who has been your most influential musical figure? The, well, let me answer that in this terms. The one who I have learnt most from, uh, I've been very privileged to get to know a young man, not so young now, uh, who's the director of music in Perth, Australia. He's Dr. Joseph Molan. And I have gone many times to turn the pages at the recording sessions. And if anything has really helped me understand how to be a musician. It's turning pages from him. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's a great privilege to see a real expert at work. A really great musician makes the clock stop, you know. You sort of think, oh, shall I pull that stop next? Oh, shall I turn the page? Or shall I push that piston? And it's all done effortlessly. And the, the watching somebody who really can do it is the most educational, if somewhat depressing, <laughs> situation well, to it, 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 From my experience, just, just quickly chip in with this quick fire question here. Um, I, I've learnt the most um, from watching really? as well. Really? Um, I've been very fortunate to have worked with such wonderful organists uh, so they can uh, work their way around the console uh, in an unbelievably uh, uh, fluent and comfortable way and uh, and find sounds mm. from the organ that you never thought existed mm. you know and seeing people just pull out one stop and it making a huge difference uh, controlling the swell pedal, pedal. it just yeah. is astonishing to watch and yeah. like you say 
I think watching people can be so influential. Sure. Um, depressing? Yes, I don't know. Possibly you might think at the time, I, I, I can never do that. And you might then think, oh, I'll give up now. Or you can think, that's what I aspire to be. And, and you work and work until you get to that level. Mm. Um, and then gradually you just end up uh, making self-improvements, having just watched those sorts of people. Yeah. Um, the final question, David. Yes. What is your idea of heaven? Oh, goodness. Um, well, it certainly would been, involve having total ownership of some marvellous building in which a magnificent pipe organ sits. But there would be nobody saying that, sorry, Mother's Union was on, so you can't play loud. And there'd be no things getting in the way of yep. enjoyment of a marvellous instrument in a mm. stunning acoustic. And probably then there'd be a couple of nice cars in the nave that I could drive up in the and nave. down in the nave. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe, because there are a few of us in the organ world that combine various hobbies. And I think a few of them also who are lucky enough to be able to have their organs and their cars have a few steam engines. <laughs> I've, I've, organs, I've, cars, it's in the steam trains. Yeah, I in could, a wonderful cathedral sized building. Think, yeah, I could cope. In the garden. I could cope with all of that.
thank you very much for the uh, for the opportunity today oh, it's been to, a pleasure. Um, to play this wonderful instrument, uh, to have a chat with yourself. Um, I've really enjoyed playing it, so thank you for Good. having me. Well, thank you for helping us out. It's a great pleasure. If you'd like to find out any more information about um, David's um, company, Vicout, or about this uh, instrument, all of the information uh, that you need is on the website, which is on the screen right now. So until next time, I will say, I think David might join me as well, we'll say cheerio. Cheerio. But goodbye, everyone. Take care Bye. and stay safe. Thank you. <laughs> was that all right? Yeah, that's great. <laughs>